Welcome to Channel AMAC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about migrate to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on a bell on the side so once we have all the updates and news, you'll be the first one getting all the insight. Now today's video is all about, let's come back to Global Talent Independent Visa, uh, which has been highly sought over the past two years, and I believe it will be the trend of the future as we have just gone through a two years of pandemic and the nations around the world is seeking for talents because if you got talents you attract money you attract investments and you have a much better future in compared to just gained investments solely so attracting talents and especially the global talents that actually attract a lot more value uh, than the previous or the traditional business investment visa so in this video we're going to go through although i do know that you know two years ago probably when the visa just came out i did have an explanation of what international recognized achievement is all about and also the nomination's reputation but in this video i'm going to combine those two together and let's review again as uh, many um interest viewers wanted to foresee whether or not they can actually meet the requirement all right so let's first of all let's review the web page of the global talent visa uh which is good uh they previously i think i think they did not have this page but i, I actually this is actually very good because uh, it has an uh, overview the fee costs and as you can see the required global talent pathway is uh, very very prioritized as you can see compared to many many other uh, visa categories and it's a permanent residency straight away so it gives you five years and should you be continuously living in Australia for continually four years you'll be eligible to apply Australian citizenship okay now uh, if you want more normal detail I've got the um, video specifically talking about that one so as you know, notice Global Talent Visa, there's a subtitle here. This is a permanent visa of people who have internationally recognized record of exceptional and outstanding achievement. Now, that's exactly what we're going to go through today. So, in the eligibility, from what we can see, obviously, if you are a global talented person, you become the benefit to the Australian community. And what we're going to have um, check is the international recognizable record of achievements which briefly just say ah oh, as long as you are very good at professions sport art or academia or research uh, by way acceptable by australians or international standard which is quite vague uh, and that's the reason we wanted to go into the actual policy to detail those things out now second thing is to be nominated you need to be nominated by an australian citizen permanent resident or eligible New Zealand citizen or Australian organization. Now, that cannot be anyone because nominator can only be from a peak Australian body in your field. Now, how would that be differ? Then we will see. And they also can be endorsed by the Prime Minister. Well, I haven't seen any yet. Well, hopefully I can get some people and actually get meeting with the PM of Australia. That would be great. But anyway, let's go into the actual policy. Now, this is the uh, the legend come, which is a database sub subscribed database required to pay annually. So, you know, general public won't have access to this. But um, as a profession in the Australian immigration law and uh, practices, we are required to have this otherwise we will have no idea how to actually match exactly what the government wants so this is the policy so as you can read 3.3.1.1.1 uh, the policy requirement for international recognitions and this is this reflects straight away to the um, global talent visa so under the policy international recognized records of exceptional outstanding achievement and i think this is too 
too verby, too you know, it's, it's just international recognized achievement should do. Um, exceptional, obviously, it's got to be exceptional and outstanding. So anyway, but it does have their meaning because they are looking for really bright, talented person or people. Uh, that person achievement have been. Uh, or will be acclaimed as exceptional and outstanding in any countries. So that is the key. Now, if your outstanding achievement can only be recognized in your country and by replacing you into another country, can your talent still be outstanding in that in any other country as well? So that is the key how they're gonna uh, basically how they uh, assess your level of talent. So if you cannot meet that talent, Obviously, global talent visa won't not, won't be uh, available. You may not pass the criteria. Okay, so achievement may attract national claim. Uh, will be a, a consider international recognized. Uh, if that achievement is an area of practice, the other country has to will attract similar acclaim in those countries. So again, that's the same same thing. This is what they're trying to explain. Because uh, a lot of people may say, "Oh, that, I, I haven't done any." <clears throat> I haven't had any other a uh, global award. What do I do now? The thing to attest this is basically taking your profile and putting yourself f from your country and move you to another country. For example, whatever the talent you have, would you be still be that nationally talented if we are to replace you to Australia, to US, to Singapore, to Germany, or anywhere else? If that equation still applies that obviously you meet that requirement so that's basically what they're trying to say here now assessing the recognitions so um there's a lot of the, these are all samples of what they actually attest but it's basically upon the applicant or the candidate to provide evidence of support so it can be a war it can be a project that you have um, previously done uh, it can be some sort of report or international award uh, that you have been earning uh, so that's basically what they're trying to say so for example applicants is rated at near top of the field of their home country and considered to be internationally recognized ex exceptional outstanding achievement if the field is undertaken recognized by a number of countries that's pretty simple pretty simple okay and achievement will be similarly recognized in relation to international Australian uh, standards so for example uh, in a uh, individual holding a senior position in a highly competitive international organization so that's it that that will be the hardest part well if you are in that uh, position that would be very good now talking here traditionally those kind of people may also be uh, meeting the criteria for business investment visa but nowadays if you are in the field of any any type of tech or global talented uh, sectors you might as well launch gti because that goes only for three months rather than waiting for two three five years through business innovation visa um, you have a track record that's very important in completing a major international projects and or the project that can be uh, nationally acclaimed and also can be acclaimed by any other country as well so the record outstanding um, is not defined by those ordinary dictionary meaning of the word apply so as such exceptional and outstanding to is act of accomplishing something extraordinary that places an individual above the average so again how do we actually assess this uh, go through your organizational chart whatever the organization that you're in if you're at the near top not not straight at the very top because very top will be the founder or the ceo but if you're at the top position in that pyramid not the middle part not the bottom part then you probably will meet that requirement uh in it is anticipated that the applicant would generally be uh, have a record uh, sustain multiple achievement however single achievement by applicant may still be regarded as a record of exceptional outstanding achievement if that achievement is cutting edge highly innovative in the nature now again how do you how do we prove cutting edge and highly innovative now that is really upon the candidate to actually provide uh evidence of support so uh, you need to show that the applicant need to show that. if they can't show they don't have any support evidence to show oh this can come from reference by a similar industry or from your boss 
uh, in actually to actually prove evidence of that exceptional out outstanding. Now, in assessing the record, so again, there's so many type of different samples uh, that you can actually go through, uh, newspaper publication and things. I'm not going to go through with all these uh, detail today, uh, but basically this is all the information that you can actually, um, or one uh, the candidate could actually gather throughout their portfolio in the past 10, 20, 30 years. Okay. Um, now the exceptional outstanding uh, achievement at international recognition for certain student. Now, this part I'm gonna not gonna talk too much because since the the beginning of GTI, they used to accept and invite graduates. But I think with the competitiveness and the competitive nature of globally nowadays. Uh, I don't think any graduate with bat, uh, with master, bachelor, or even PhD will actually meet those requirements unless your research topic is cutting edge and in some sort of high tech innovations. Now, uh, next one I wanted to talk about is the um, the nomination. Now, a lot of people said, look. I've got a friend who is Australian citizen. I got a, I got a mate, and, and my boss is Australian permanent resident. Can they sponsor me? Obviously, they will meet these the first requirement, but then the second requirement is the status of the nomination nominator, okay, and also the national reputation. Now, this is the part that I wanted to discuss more in detail, where the nominator has to be with some sort of a national reputation. Now, a lot of these global talent, for example, advanced manufacture, ma manufacturing, there's actually very, very limited people in Australia that do have that kind of national reputation because Australia has never really been involved much in the advanced manufacturing, for example, IC uh, chip designing, things like that. So they need to show all that uh, and if you cannot find those people, probably the only way you can actually get nominator is through organization. Okay, I'm going to go through that later, but let's go through a personal nominator. They need to have a solo track record achievement, evidence of high caliber, leadership and relevant theory and expertise, professional association with Lee organization, current previous employment history, and their participation conference in Australia internationally. So there's actually a lot for the nominator to actually provide and that that might that that might cause some trouble why do i say that well if i'm a nominator and trying to nominate you and the gti candidate turn around and say hey uh yeah uh, thanks for helping me but the immigration needs this from you you need to show a track record achievement and your high high uh, evidence of high caliber you're a leader and you also involved in the leading organization and all those employment history tax payment references what am I going to do if I'm an Australian nominator? I probably will turn away. Um, I think that's what a lot of people might actually experience previously. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the way it is. You need somebody to attest your international achievement. And somebody knows the field that you're in. Now, if you cannot find that, probably Australian organization will be a better way to go. So the term of Australian organization must be given a broad interpretation and include any organization registered in Australia. So they will have a Australian company number or Australian business number. Uh, organizing operating business in Australia will have this. That's exactly what I just said. Australian organization which operate in outside will have an ABN if organizers you only operate out overseas but not in Australia, they must have established an Australian parent company. So uh, as you can see, there is not much required for it by the organization, but for the uh, personal might need a lot of these kind of stuff. So again, if you want, really want to, obviously you cannot just find any company though. You, you need to find those company that relates to your field of expertise, but it doesn't have to go through with those personal criteria as much as right up here. Now, 
doesn't require national reputation to qualify as by association. Now, usually, if you go through an organization that is in your expertise or field,、um, they probably already meet those kind of requirement. But if you go through a person, it's actually harder. Now, go through an Australian organization. Probably will be a little bit harder as well. Now there are currently two organisations that are open to accept、um, these、uh, nomination. One is ACS Australian Computer Society, that's for Digitech, and one is Eng- Engineer Australia, that's for all the engineers. However, those two authorities, well, their assessing criteria is actually quite hard. But anyway, this is for the video of update on the global talent independent for the international recognized achievement and also update on the national、uh, reputation for the nominator altogether today in this video. Should you have more questions or query, more than welcome to leave comment right down below, and I see you next video. Goodbye.